just out of where the popcorn is, I've decided to mulch. I might do an experiment and just mulch one side, I think, and let the other side grow as it is. And um, I think it needs another feed. It's looking a tiny bit yellow. I don't know why there's so much... There's homemade compost from pig manure, there's uh, chicken manure in there. Um, you know, pellets. Um, so they should be okay. Maybe the roots just aren't getting to it. Maybe they just need a good water. Hopefully I get some rain today. My daughter loves um, just grazing on the peas in the garden. She kind of looks after them, which is nice. About to cut some more comfrey to make some more fertiliser. But you can see that patch that I cut down just a few weeks ago, right to the ground, how it's growing back up. Another one of the wonderful things about comfrey, how it grows back so quickly. Plants love it. I've just made up my second batch. Um, I've got a full video on how to make this stuff, although I haven't got any dandelions at the moment. <clears throat> this is my plant food, all about closing the loop. There's the remains of the old stuff. Um, le stink, and then this is uh, the soup de la comfrie with a garnish of nettles, um, which will make a beautiful uh, fertilizer um, for anything that's kind of left in the garden towards the end and for the second succession taking us into autumn. Not going to be ready for two or three weeks, could be quicker, I guess, with the because now we've got the hot temperatures, but um, you know, it'll get. We'll put it into the ground even if there's nothing there at the end of the year or something. Um, it's all good stuff. And we'll still get a few water ins out of all this, what's in there. Just out in the greenhouse today, I, it's something, a job I don't do very often, but is um, pruning the tomato vines. We've got these really nice um, pruning scissors. And um, what I'm trying to do today is give some airflow along the bottom the plants you can see the ones on the other side got lots of room at the bottom and the ones here are a bit closer but you can see these are still need to be done um, you can see clearly not so much airflow at the bottom and it involves either getting rid of some weeds uh, I kind of have rules very simple rules um, any stalks any um, shoots which have not been caught early I mean, if they go crazy, I'm not trying to, you know, chop the plant down by half. Um, but any stalks that face inwards into the row um, get cut off. Any armpits I can see. Um, that kind of thing that I've missed. Um, the low down, any leaves which touch the ground get cut off as well. Not the leaf, but the actual stalk. And generally speaking, um, that gives a nice clearance below the plants lots of airflow you know we're trying to grow tomatoes here not leaves so we don't want to be experts in growing leaves we want to be experts in growing tomatoes that's what we're trying to achieve so we've had the window fitters back this week for the next stage of the project and changing this pantry window bedroom spare bedroom front stroke side door and the main top windows um, I've never really shown you up in the loft, but you may have seen photos on our Instagram. See, this now leads us with a bunch of jobs that we need to do, like finishing all around the frames, um, around the door, and I will replace all these steps, a bit like we did. <coughs> it won't be a big terrace, but a small version. For got some materials left over from last year to do that. So that means the house will be a bit warmer this winter, although it's particularly cold, but a bit more efficient, triple glazing. Um, and it's lovely that we'll have more light coming in, because that was a blocked door, um, solid door, got more light coming in now, which will be wonderful. And then with some of the old window frames that come out, the idea I think is I'm going to make a bench, or well, maybe more than one bench, but at least one bench for the terrace, maybe a bench for the garden as well, see what we can do with these. And it's lovely timber. You know, it's a real shame to, to yank it all out really, but it, you know, the, they were two single frame pounds of glass and it's just very inefficient. Um, but we'll, we will reuse the timber somehow, it won't go to waste. 
So I'm just outside, I've left it, it's 6 p.m. here. I mean, you still think it's the middle of the day, but the sun is over there. I'm still quite high in the sky, beating down, but. Um, <clears throat> so I'm planting gherkins. Um, we traditionally always plant these after midsummer. Um, we've had such hot weather here, and, uh, as I've said probably hundreds of times, and I've waited and waited, but I can't wait anymore. So I've waited till the end of the day. I'm gonna water them plenty and get them in the ground. Um, with the ones I planted earlier, I've just noticed um, by earlier, I mean earlier in the year. Um, the first gherkin, which is good to see. Let the gherkins begin. Let the pickling begin. Oh, second gherkin, I've just seen another one. Which is nice. We love pickled gherkins here. Um, and other pickles that involve pickling gherkins or sliced gherkins or whatever. These lettuces are about to go to seed, I think. Well, these aren't. Tom Thumbs. Mm. Pure arts, I mean they're looking fantastic, I'm so pleased with them this year, but they are. So we're going to cut a few and give them away to friends um, and bless people with them. The strawberry season <coughs> and I see the evidence of some serious strawberry jam making. That should keep us going over winter. And they and a load more we've got will be eaten with fresh cream tonight I think. I think that's tonight's dinner. It's so hot it's difficult to think about eating anything else really but sounds good to me. Beans are doing well. Greek bean to the top. And first flowers on the runner beans. Loving the sweet corn, all the sweet corn's loving the compost. Saturday evening, finally we got some rain. I think it's been two weeks since the last time we had rain. It's wonderful. Is it rushing on this? Oh, it's there as well. Peter's just renovating this door and it's got Russian letters on it. You can't really see on the video. So she scraped it off with a heat gun and then <clears throat> revealed the message. And the message translates as all that come in will be corpses. It's like a curse kind of thing, which is, you know, a really nice greeting, isn't it? So, um, People may want to find why is it from a generation home, but that's to do with the Soviet time. Yeah, it's to do with the previous... In between us, between yeah. the family and back to family. It's complicated. Very close to the home, I don't know, 30 yards. This year we've got this wonderful patch of wild strawberries. I don't know if you can see all the little dots of red. Here, hundreds. So we just come through and pick them. Mm. It just tastes amazing. They're just falling off as I touch them. Just been sowing my autumn plantings. Got brassicas in there. Um, that's tundra cabbage. Chinese cabbage and an express pointed cabbage. And down there we've got lettuces, we've got spinach, we've got um, some basil, some coriander, um, and some turnips. Yeah. Hope you can hear me. Um, this is a Colorado beetle. Um, and it just This is a, an adult, an egg laying machine basically. And it lays yellow eggs and you need to hunt around for them and um, on potato plants
because if you don't find them they'll hatch and they turn into Colorado larvae which destroy potato plants. Big problem in Latvia. I know a lot of friends around have had a problem with them. We've largely managed to escape them, if I'm honest. Um, we just noticed them last night, whilst others have already been dealing with them. And, um, let's see if I can find some eggs. There they are, so we just need to squash those and squash that. And then what they do is they turn into this. They are Colorado larvae and you can see how they the sun in the right direction. Eat the potato plant. So we just need to flick these off into a basket, into a box. See there's not many. A little bit there, a little bit there. Um, you can see is a good example of what they do. And on our main crop on the in the no, in the uh, on the main field, there's just a handful at the top. So it looks like we caught them quite early, thankfully, and we can deal with them. Just keep an eye on it. Finally, putting in the overflow for this <coughs> barrel. This is the most difficult one because um, it's got the least gradient and I need it to be under the footpath. I need to be so the water rolls out and not really interfere with the flower bed so yeah tricky. Got a deep soak away there with loads of stones in obviously. Hopefully that will do the trick. Okay all done. It's quite complicated there because of the difference in the levels. You can't really see it because of the dappled light. <coughs> I know it's a lot more level. And, and we can walk over it and it will drain away without us faffing around with guttering and stuff like that. Good. <coughs> 